week is all about the eggs, really. Um, so what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to do breakfast burritos. Super, super easy, okay? Really delicious. It was one of my grade eight recipes when I was in home ec in school, and that was ages ago. Some of you guys are gonna be like, prehistoric. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just so easy to make and just comes together so fast, and it's a good source of protein and fats and um, just is really yummy, okay? Of course, my dog is here helping me out today. You know, I gotta have an assistant no matter what. And plus, he will probably reap some of the benefits because he loves scrambled eggs too. So first off, um, let's talk about the egg. So eggs are amazing, okay? They contain um, nine amino acids. They're like a complete food. They've got protein, they've got fat. Um, they're filling, they're easy. You can microwave them um, and make scrambled eggs, although they're a little bit rubbery. Um, but they're truly amazing. And so when we do stuff like this, we want to make sure that we're using eggs because eggs are just, yeah, they're cheap. They're awesome. Um, so for this recipe, actually what we'll be doing is uh, we will be making two wraps or one Mondo size wrap for you guys. Um, but it does take two eggs, okay? So I'm going to start off by showing you the recipe because I tend to forget that. If you do not have salsa, don't worry about it. You don't absolutely need it. Um, you can turn this recipe into a pizza version um, with mozzarella cheese and pizza sauce um, and pepperoni if you want to. You can put ham in this. You can put leftover vegetables from last night. If you had roasted vegetables, if you had roasted um, asparagus, if you had corn, you can turn it into like a salsa with beans. Um, you can do the salsa and guacamole. This recipe as a staple is really good. And I'm actually gonna teach you guys how to make proper scrambled eggs instead of eviscerated eggs, which is what I call them, which is small pieces of what used to be egg, okay? A lot of you guys, uh, when you're dealing with stovetop stuff, you get really impatient, you want it to cook faster, and so you end up chopping it up and flattening it. We're not gonna do that today, okay? The other thing we're gonna focus on is stovetop safety so that I can teach you a whole bunch of stuff on the stovetop. Um, if you are vegan, I'm terribly sorry, um, you can still make this recipe using tofu. You just want to make sure you use a firmer tofu. Um, and basically what you're doing is heating the tofu, but you can still mix in some of the seasonings with that and still make a pretty good wrap with it as well. Okay. Um, so if you're not, you can still make this and still eat it. All right. So the very first thing I'm going to do is coarse wash my hands. I'm going to elbow tap, make sure it's hot. Get my soap going. I'm gonna scrub really, really well. Got my towel here and I'm gonna towel dry. If this is your first demo and you guys have not come and watched the muffins that I did last week, um, please make sure you watch the safety demo first. It'll go, oh, that's my sink. It'll go over um, all of the stuff that you're gonna need to know, and uh, it will get you prepared to where you need to be for this recipe, okay? Um, if you are coming and this is your very first recipe, hello, all right? I am not a professional. Um, I'm a professional teacher and home ec teacher, but I'm not a professional YouTuber. So um, it is what it is. Hope you have fun doing this, and um, make sure that your parents are here in the house, like nearby, especially with stovetop safety, just in case, okay? So um, the very first thing you're going to do is get all your equipment out. So for this, what we're going to need is we're going to need, of course, a frying pan. Um, I'm going to be using a cast iron. Um, I love cast iron. I personally inherited this one. Um, but if you guys have a traditional frying pan, that's totally awesome. Um, as far as cast iron, the biggest difference, obviously, is it's made of iron and super heavy. Um, but... Um, it cooks really evenly, which is why I like it. Um, but again, if you guys just have a uh, frying pan, basic frying pan, you're good to go, okay? The other stuff I'm gonna need for this is I've got my two eggs. I am gonna need my liquid measure. Um, I've got my salt and my pepper, and this recipe actually calls for garlic powder as well, but for some reason, mine seems to have gone missing. So I'm actually gonna use real garlic, which is totally fine. Um, this has already been chopped up, so it's really, really fine. So it should cook within enough time with the eggs. Um, if I was to be using something else in this, so say I wanted to do this breakfast wrap with uh, vegetables such as 
red pepper, what I would actually do is saute them first um, just to soften them because the amount of time that it takes for eggs to cook is actually not that fast. Um, so you're fine with adding things like cheese or uh, mushrooms or spinach because they do not take long to cook. But anything that's harder or a heartier vegetable, um, so onion, um, is going to take much longer to cook. And you don't want to add it in with the eggs because then they're going to be crunchy and raw. Okay. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is grate my cheese beforehand. And anytime we deal with stovetop safety, we always want to make sure that all of our parts are ready to go before we heat up our frying pan. We never preheat our frying pan or our stovetop. Um, because we want to make sure that if I am heating it, I'm standing there and I'm right there ready to roll. Um, and that avoids a lot of fires, it avoids smoking, and it avoids me burning my oil off and having really bad tasting burritos. Okay, so once I've got my all of my equipment out and I do have a uh, flipper or a turner that I'm going to be using as well as a utility fork, and I've got my milk and my ingredients, um, what I'm actually going to start off with is just grating my cheese so that I do it and I'm ready to go. Okay. So the recipe calls for, I think 125. You can try to be precise in this. It's kind of harder to measure um, grated cheese. If you're just doing one big wrap for yourself, um, you won't really need the full 125 unless you love cheese, which is awesome. I love cheese as well. Um, and this is my dairy free cheese, so I really like it. Um, but um, if you're okay with kind of a little bit less, you can go as far, like as low down as like 50 milliliters and you'll be okay, okay? So I've got my grated cheese, it's ready to go. And I'm actually gonna put it over on my other side to where my assembly um, area is. And that's just gonna make sure that I have everything good to go there. Um, okay, so we're gonna start off by cracking some eggs. And I'm hoping that you guys remember how to crack eggs. Um, so the biggest thing with cracking eggs is just to make sure that you um, split it down the middle and you're going to push and then pull away, okay? If you do happen to get um, eggshells into this bowl, you can actually use your um, half of your eggshell here to scoop it out instead of your fingers because your fingers makes a mess and you get egg everywhere. Um, and this actually works really well, okay? So I've got one. I've got two. Now, of course, I'm gonna wash my hands because egg is like a meat. And I want to make sure that I am staying safe. All right, so I've got my eggs. I am now going to measure out my milk. So for this recipe, I'm actually going to be using uh, 50 milliliters of milk. all the way down to the bottom. And again, I want to go slightly above my line, right, to be able to uh, take account for the meniscus. So I've got my flat, stable surface. I'm looking at eye level. I'm good to go for 50. And that is what I'm going to add. I'm now going to add in my salt and my pepper. Um, so salt is really important as far as bringing out the natural flavor and stuff. I'm going to be grinding it in, so I'm going to do three turns. Um, but I do have amounts on the recipe that you guys can take a look at. And the same for pepper. And this is where you would add in your garlic powder, but again, I do not have garlic powder. So I'm just going to take a small spoon and put a little bit of garlic. huge fan of garlic powder you can 100% lessen the amount um, I really love garlic so that's why I've kind of put that for that recipe um, but you do not have to put that you can use other seasonings as well um, what I would usually say is stick to two and make sure that they're in the same uh, like a partnership with each other so if you're gonna choose like say oregano use thyme um, if you're gonna do something like uh, paprika garlic mixes really well with it just make sure it's not going like too crazy because I find more than two seasonings is just a lot Okay, and you're also, um, in this recipe, you're gonna be adding cheese and salsa, and so we're kind of more of like a Mexican theme in that, um, but it depends on what you'd like to add, okay? 
So I'm gonna take my utility fork and I'm gonna beat my eggs. And what my goal is, is to be able to one, break my, my egg yolks, and two, just add a little bit of air so that my um, scrambled eggs are light and fluffy, okay? So your mixture should be yellow, okay? If it's not yellow, you do not break your egg, your egg yolks, all right? So I've got that. What I'm now gonna do is take my spray. And if you don't have cooking spray, you can always use margarine as well. And you just wanna make sure then that you turn your uh, frying pan just so that it coats everything, okay? Because the eggs are gonna spread out and you don't want any of them stuck, okay? So I'm gonna take my pan, I'm gonna spray down uh, my pan. And again, your frying pan, you can probably lift up. This is really heavy, so it's, it's hard for me to lift. I am then gonna turn on my stove top. Now, stove top. Let's talk about stove top safety. Okay, so biggest thing with stove top safety is to avoid fires and to avoid burns, okay? Um, when we have frying pans on our stove top, we always wanna make sure that if we've got a handle that it's facing towards the inside of our countertop. In a perfect world, we would just face it towards the inside of our uh, stove, but our stove top, but if we've got other pots and pans here, just make sure that it's within this area. Um, you don't want any handles that are sticking out because it's really easy to catch yourself and then to spill stuff if that's the case. Um, the other thing is if I'm heating up this frying pan, I also want to make sure that one, I'm heating it properly. So I'm going to start off at medium heat and I'm not going to go above that. If I turn it up to high to heat this up because I want it to go faster, what I'll end up doing is it'll burn. So anything that I put on there, it'll burn the uh, layer that touches the frying pan, but it won't cook thoroughly, okay? Um, the only time you're actually gonna use high heat with uh, stove tops is when you cook pasta or sometimes when you're searing meat, okay? So we always wanna make sure that anytime that we start off heat, any type of recipe usually will start with a medium heat and that's five on most uh, number uh, dials, okay? So I am going to heat this up. Once I am heated though, how am I gonna be able to test to make sure that my eggs are ready to cook? Because I don't wanna dump my eggs in here if this isn't ready. I wanna be able to have my eggs to cook right off the bat. So some of you guys might be saying, just put your hand above, come on in and take a look at this. Put your hand and put it above my frying pan and then I can feel the heat. No. Okay, so if someone comes by and I've got my hand like this, and or I lose my footing or whatever, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up planting my hand in here and I can end up burning my hand quite badly. Instead, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna take some water and I'm gonna do some a sizzle test and I'll show you guys. But basically you're gonna take a little bit of water from your tap, you're gonna take the ends and you're gonna flick them into your pan and you wanna hear that sizzle. If you can hear the sizzle and the water evaporates, your pan is good to go and it's ready to roll, okay? All right, so I should be good. I've got this, I've got that. Um, for my construction of my wraps, um, I'm not gonna use salsa because um, my dog is gonna be eating part of this. Um, and But you guys would also make sure that you've got pre-measured your salsa and you've got it waiting for you on the side as well. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my burner. And this is a gas stove, just to let you guys know. Um, if you've got an electric stove, it's gonna look the exact same. It just might have either a flat top or you might have elements. Um, I have an actual flame underneath, okay? All of it's going to work, right? Okay, so I'm gonna wait for this to heat. While I wait for this to heat, I'm not gonna go and talk to someone else or go and you know fold laundry, which I'm sure your parents would love. Um, go and play, go do something else. I wanna make sure that I am here and I am present the entire time, okay? So I'm going to do that and I'm going to wait for this. And again, I'm not going to do this, okay? Um, once I think that I'm good to go, I'm actually just going to take a little drops and I'm going to test it. And you can test it as many times as you need to, okay? It's not like you, you need to do one and done. Um, the other thing I want to watch for is if my oil starts to smoke, I have burnt my oil and I don't want to use it because it will make my eggs taste really gross, okay? So I'm actually going to start sizzle testing pretty soon. So again, I got a couple drops, I flick them in. So steam is coming off of them and I can see them bubble, but there's no sizzle and I want that sizzle, okay? So they're just gonna evaporate, which is totally fine. And 
I'm gonna wait about 15 more seconds and I'm gonna try it again. And I don't know if you can hear it out in YouTube land, but I did have a sizzle, okay? So that means I'm good to go, I'm ready to roll, all right? I'm gonna take my eggs and I'm gonna spread them or uh, put them into my pan. Now, what I'm looking for to make sure that I know my pan is ready is this ring of white all the way around the outside, okay? So you should see that ring as soon as you put your eggs in because that means that your pan is hot enough and your eggs have started to cook. So what I'm actually gonna do is let this sit for about 15 seconds. I'm then gonna slowly pull back my egg in a clockwise fashion. And what I'm doing is actually just kind of bringing in eggs waves or egg waves as I like to call them. And these are just chunks of egg that are cooked. And the liquid will go in where the holes are. And mine are brown because I have a cast iron. And one of the benefits of the cast iron is that you take all the seasonings from past things that you've cooked and it comes in with that, but you guys should have clearer eggs than I do. And I'm gonna continue to do this for as long as I have liquid. Now, if I feel like my eggs are cooking a little bit too fast, I will turn down my heat. So if I'm getting some browned eggs where I feel like it's burning, I'm gonna turn down my stove heat. And once I get to the point where the egg is no longer filling in the gaps, I'm gonna let it sit for just a little bit and cook, and then I'm gonna flip it. I am not gonna chop it, okay? I want fluffy eggs, that's my goal. So I'm going to lightly take these and flip them in sections. Again, usually this is a good amount for like one big size wrap, but if you have smaller wraps, you can definitely make two out of this. And what I'm looking for is if for not to be shiny. Now egg whites are going to be shiny, but I like this matte color right here rather than the shiny sections because that tells me that it's cooked. And I don't want to overcook it. I don't want rubbery eggs. I want light and fluffy eggs. Once I think I've gotten like 95% of the way there, I'm going to turn off my stove top, let it cool a little, a little bit as the heat goes down and just finishes off my eggs. And I've got these big egg pieces. They're good, they're fluffy. And I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to take it off of my stove top. Now, my cast iron will heat all the way through, so I have to make sure that I use my handles or my um, oven mitts for this, okay? Um, because I don't wanna grab something that's metal, especially if it's overheat, because then I can burn myself, okay? If you do end up burning yourself, please make sure you run it underneath cold water. Um, and you take care of it because it might not seem that serious, but they are. All right, so for my assembly, I'm gonna get my wraps. Now, hopefully you guys will have normal wrap to chias. I don't, um, I'm gluten-free, so I don't carry just like regular wrap, wheat wraps, because my kids don't eat them. But I'm gonna try to show you how to wrap like a burrito using um, a rice wrapper. Um, and I get that this is, it's, it might be a little difficult, but um, I have these on hand, so I'm gonna use them. Um, so, for me anyways, with rice wrappers, I have to wet them to soften them. That one already broke. But this is gonna make it pliable. For you guys, what I would do is I would grab your wrap to say this is your wrap. I would put it into the middle of your plate, okay? Um, and how you make your burrito is really important because some of you guys might be like, well, what about the cheese? Why didn't we just throw the cheese in with the eggs? And part of that is because cheese burns really fast and I don't want the cheese to burn, okay? 
Um, and if I had cheese stuck on my frying pan, the mess is really, really bad to clean up. It takes quite a bit. Um, and it's, it's just, it doesn't make for good. Yeah. I don't know if these are going to work. Well, we'll see. Might be a little bit of a mess, but it'll give you the general idea. Okay. So you're going to take your wrap and again, don't use rice wrappers. Okay. That's just what I have. You're going to put it in. You're then going to take your eggs and you're going to plate them into, sorry, you're then going to take your cheese and you're going to put it into the middle of your wrap. Okay. You're going to put your eggs on top and this is going to force your, um, your cheese to melt. So once you wrap it, what you're actually going to do is let it sit for a little bit and that will melt all the cheese. If you're using salsa, you're actually going to put it on top then, um, and then you're going to wrap it like a burrito. So when we wrap like a burrito, we actually fold our sides in, okay? Tuck this back underneath and then flip. And that's essentially what it's going to look like, okay? All right? Now, because I have just wrapped this all together, this cheese is gonna start to melt. And actually, this is pretty cool because you guys can see it. Um, and the salsa is going to sit with it on the bottom. When you do go to eat this though, it'll all come out. This is just the way that salsa is. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. So I look forward to seeing your guys' pictures with all of these. Um, hopefully this is a nummy recipe that you guys can make over and over. It's a personal favorite of mine. Um, and, uh, enjoy. Stay cooking.